The fastest way to God is a combination of, of silence every day, a spiritual practice of silence and holy relationship, a relationship that's given over to the purpose of exposing and uncovering the ego. That's like a, a double stirring of the hornet's nest, you know, it's, the bees will come out and, and they'll be ready to attack something, bite something, because it's like, you know, that really stirs it up. That's like spraying a can of raid or some kind of thing right into the hornet's nest, <laughs> saying, okay, you're not going to stay in the, in the safe haven of, of, of the body and the past. You've got to come out and you've got to face all this stuff to come through it. So that's why I think, you know, on this journey, you know, in practical terms, that will bring you through the darkness to the light because so much unconscious um, beliefs and so many unconscious judgments are flushed up immediately in that context. And, and the, the other part of that is, uh, by holy relationship I understand that I'm in holy relationship with everyone. So it's not a, it's not a, a sexual relationship or an intimate relationship necessarily. It's seeing the Christ in another. And I'm just wondering, um, I think the question was, uh, oh, by those two practices, stillness, being in holy relationship, going back to the story you shared about the, the woman who did the hip hypnosis, if she had that unconscious rage toward men and her, and her ex-husband, if she was practicing stillness and being in holy relationship with every person she came across, would there be a need for her to go through the the darkness of that of that unconscious stuff? Because to me, it's it's not real anyway. So, will it still come up to be worked through, or will it kind of dissolve like mist in the sun? Because you are in the stillness, you are in holy relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, this is a pathway of going through the darkness to the light. So you might say that, that pain and suffering are unnecessary. That they're, they're totally optional. Uh, it's, it's possible to be so willing uh, that you open up to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and you, you tune into that and then you are guided specifically what to say, what to do, where to go, you know, and just getting engulfed in the joy. That's always there. Um, when people seem to have issues around, we'll say for her it was men or her ex-husband, this or that, whatever the issue seems to be, it's, it's a bit of a clue of how the Holy Spirit will work with you. Uh, so if you have these kind of issues, you know, you shouldn't be surprised. Uh, in her case, is, is, is a man starts showing up or men start showing up in her life. Um, I remember in the parable of David that I was so shy uh, all the way through childhood and all the way through high school and into university. And when I finally, I didn't go on a date with a woman uh, until I was 27 years old. And so the Holy Spirit had a little tactic for that. Uh, when I made it to graduate school, when I was 27 years old, my first date was with one of the women in the graduate program and interesting numbers, the way that the numbers came down was there was, it was a real prestigious program, very elite, we were all full scholarship and there was eight of us total and, the, and there was one male, David, and seven females. Uh, so you see how the Holy Spirit says, uh, we can work through this issue uh, that you seem to have with women, we'll just stack the deck. Uh, you know, graduate school, where you have all the pressures of, you know, papers and committees and I was a teaching assistant and this and this. It was like, yeah, we'll just stack the deck uh, that way. And, and so it was just a way of starting for me to loosen up from any kind of judgments, charges, beliefs, feelings, you know, working through it all. And so typically the Holy Spirit will do that. Even when you have like a certain insight of something like, uh-oh, this is, this is something that's an issue for me, usually the Holy Spirit will move quickly into action and you'll get an opportunity to, to move into the experience that you want by moving through something 
by putting it into practice right away. I found that that's like a method of operation. I, was, when I, I came back from Victoria, country Victoria to Sydney, and the suburb of Chatswood. And after 25 years, it had turned into what they call Chatswood, because all the, all the Chinese had infiltrated Chatswood. <laughs> and I came back to live with my mother. And I thought, well, I'm out of the country, I'm back in this big city, I'm going down to a nice coffee shop and going to enjoy the city life. Anyway, I went down to ch chat with the shopping centre and I, I thought, they took over my country. <laughs> <laughs> they took over Sydney, the Chinese everywhere. I had a big set on Chinese. So anyway, then I didn't have a house or any money only after leaving the marriage and then Peter, Peter actually had enough uh, in her life to, to buy this beautiful four-story terrace where you've been in this village and of course went to move into the village every single person in my street was Chinese in my coat <laughs> every single person the deck was stacked yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every single person yeah. are they still there? Oh, oh they're still there but we would like come to love Chinese because oh. after that Tina's business took us to China and we went to Low Wu and we did the factories and we went to dinner and ate dogs and cats with the <laughs> with, 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 we tried not to eat them, isn't that right? Snake and everything. So like the whole world conspired on, on me and even Tina's business became mainly in China, all just because the Holy Spirit said, Yeah, you've got a set on Chinese. <laughs> everything you've been doing in Chinese. <laughs> My airline took me to Hong Kong all the time. You know, I was just like Everywhere I went, everything was Chinese, Chinese, Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. Just having to open a little bit of Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak fluent Chinese now. Yeah. And yeah. Dogs and cats have become quite Influence. delicious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you, you will find that it doesn't matter what the charge of the grievance is, that the Holy Spirit will use whatever symbols that you believe in to reach you. So. The chances are, if you had like a, a major grievance like my friend did against men and, and her ex-husband, that, that the Holy Spirit would use those symbols to loosen that charge and bring the mind into a pace, place of peace and non-judgment. When I was much younger, I, I, was in, I think I was in junior high school and I tried out for the football team and, and I had to go to get a physical and uh, and they discovered I had a, the body of David had a hernia, and so I had to go in for, at one point of my, my young adulthood, uh, tonsillectomy, and one point for a hernia operation. And each time, the hospital was a strange place, like every time I, when I was younger, they would take me to a funeral home. I'd be like, ooh, what is this? This is a weird feeling, watching a, a dead person uh, there, you know, you would have all those feelings come up as a child going to funeral homes. When I would go to a hospital, uh, they would go to prick my fingers and there was something about blood. Uh, blood that I identified as my blood uh, being drawn, I, I, would, I would faint. So this happened a couple different times and then when I got older I was into the Course in Miracles and had a friend who was into Yogananda and Kriya Yoga and whatever. And he said, uh, we were living quite simple at the time and playing tennis and working on our mind training and he said that there's a, a study for vegetarians, which I was identified at the time, and um, you know they they'll take they'll prick your they'll take blood as part of this study. You go into the hospital progressively, over and over and over, uh, and then we get paid some money at the end. And immediately I, I knew, okay, this is the Holy Spirit again. <laughs> Only the Holy Spirit sets up you know for somebody who faints at the sight of blood. Uh, uh, hospital kind of visit where you go and you, they have to take it increasingly over and over and over, even to the point near the end where they were, they were having trouble finding a vein, it looked like a junkie. Uh, this is like somebody who's never, never done drugs, never done alcohol, smoked or whatever, and, and, and I look at my arm and I go, oh my, what have I done here? But it was a really good undoing of that association that I had in my mind around blood. Uh, that one, the Holy Spirit popped me through that in a major way. So it was, it's good we start to realize this when things happen, you know, that we don't try to run away from these experiences, but we say, like, let's just, okay, here, here come the Chinese, and let's uh, get about this forgiveness lesson here.